Good day, Rancho Verde pre-calculus class. This is Mr. Langston coming at you, and today is September 11th, 2017. And we have our first thing to do is a warm-up. So you have 3x plus 2x cubed minus 9 minus 8x squared, and that's all divided by x squared plus 1. First thing you're going to do is take this and put it in order. So we have, and I'm going to write it here, 2x cubed, check, minus 8x squared, check, plus 3x, check, minus 9, and it's all being divided by x squared plus 1. Now, with this x squared plus 1, what we have as well it needs to be in descending order. So I'm missing a 0x. So I got to add that in. So I have x squared plus 0x plus 1. Now, when you do long division, look right here. We have x squared, we have 2x cubed. Look at the leading term. And I ask myself, x squared times what gives me 2x cubed? And the answer is going to be x squared times 2x gives me 2x cubed. And now I take this 2x and I multiply it with everything, the x squared, the 0x, and the 1. So 2x times x squared is 2x cubed. 2x times 0x is plus 0. And 2x times 1 is just... 2x. And now put it all. I'm going to end up adding things up, but before I add them up, I'm going to change the sign. So this becomes a minus, becomes a minus, becomes a minus. And now I do 2x cubed minus 2x cubed. That gives me a zero. That's a sign that I'm on the right track. I have negative 8x squared. 3x minus 2x is going to give me an x, so plus 1x, or I can just put x. And then I'm going to bring down the minus 9. And again, I look at the leading terms. So negative 8x squared and x squared. And I ask myself, x squared times what gives me negative 8x squared? x squared times what gives me negative 8x squared? And so I have x squared times negative 8. <clears throat> so I take this negative 8 and I distribute it into x squared plus 0x plus 1. So I get negative 8x squared plus 0x and negative 8 times 1 minus 8. And now I'm going to add it together. But before I do... I change the sign, change it into a plus, change this into a minus, change this into a plus. 8x squared, negative 8x squared plus 8x squared, that's going to be 0. And now I got 1x plus 0x, which is just 1x or x. And negative 9 plus 8, negative 1. So I have my answer here. I have the top is 2x minus 8, so... 2x minus 8 plus my remainder. My remainder is x minus 1, and that's all over. And remember, it's over this, x squared plus 1. Always check to see if you can factor out the bottom and if you can cancel it with the top, because you have to be able to do that. Uh, sorry. Not that you have to be able to do it, but you have to do it if you are able to do it. Um, in this case, the bottom doesn't factor out. x squared plus 1 does not factor out. And what I'm talking about is factoring out the bottom and seeing if it cancels the top. Let's say this was our bottom number, x squared minus 1. And let's say it was over x minus 1. I can factor out the bottom into x minus 1, x plus 1. And again... I got x minus 1 in the top. Then I can take and cancel out bottom and top. 
So that would become 1 over x plus 1. So again, this is if the bottom was x squared minus 1. I would be able to simplify that fraction, that remainder. In this case, I can't for this problem. And the reason I can't is because it's an x squared plus 1 in the bottom. It doesn't factor. So we're continuing on with the uh, last part of section 2.3, which is polynomial and synthetic division. Um, our focus standards, polynomial and rational functions, basically is chapter 2. Our content standard is polynomial and synthetic division. That's the section. And our power standard is that we're going to attend to precision and we are also going to persevere because guess what? This takes a lot of precision, one mistake, and that's that. And also, you do have to persevere because it's not always fun. It's not always going to be nice. So our language objective is that you're going to be able to communicate the steps involved in performing synthetic division, as is evidence, through your Haiku Learning webpage discussions. So without much further ado, uh, and I don't mean to be on I'm sorry. We have synthetic division that we're going to do. Now, it's used only when the leading term of the divisor has the coefficient of 1 and an exponent 1. So what I'm talking about is this. I've got right here, all this is being divided by x plus 3. Well, this x plus 3, and I'm going to write it over here. So I'm going to say x plus 3. It has a coefficient of 1 and an exponent of 1. So I'm allowed to use synthetic division on this. As long as it has a coefficient of 1 and an exponent of 1, I can use synthetic division. Now, first thing to do with synthetic division is you are going to take the opposite of the number that's part of the binomial. So in this case, I have x plus 3, so I take the opposite of plus 3, which is minus 3. And I'm going to go and I'm going to write that right over here. So I have minus 3. And I'm going to give myself some room. So I got minus 3 right here. So I have this whole thing, x to the fourth minus 10x squared minus 2x plus 4. What I'm going to do is take the coefficients. Understand, it's got to be in descending order. And I cannot skip a term. It's got to be in descending order, can't skip a term. Look at this. I go from x to the fourth to an x squared. What happened to my x cubed? Well, I got to put a placeholder in. So I have 0 x cubed. That's my placeholder. So now I take my coefficients. I've got a coefficient of 1. I've got a coefficient for 1x to the fourth. I've got a coefficient of 0 for 0x cubed, negative 10 for negative 10x squared. I've got a coefficient of negative 2 for negative 2x, and I have a coefficient of 4 because I have that 4 left there. So now, first thing with synthetic division, bring the top number down. Sorry, not the top number, the first number, down. So I've got a 1 here. Now I'm going to take and I'm going to multiply it with negative 3. So I have 1 times negative 3. Well, that's going to be negative 3. And now I'm going to combine the 0 and the negative 3. 0 plus negative 3, well, that's going to give me negative 3. And I'm now going to take this negative 3 and I'm going to multiply it with this negative 3. So negative 3 times negative 3 is going to be positive 9. So I'll put the 9 here. And I'm going to add these. I'm going to combine them. Negative 10 plus 9. Well that's going to give me negative 1. Now I got negative 3 times negative 1, which is positive 3. Add the terms. Negative 2 plus 3, positive 1. 
Again, multiply negative 3 times 1, negative 3. Add the terms. 4 plus a negative 3, positive 1. Now, this last number here, that's my remainder. This part here, this is my answer. So I have, I'll start putting in my variables. So I have a plus 1. I put an x here. I put an x squared here. I put an x cubed here. Now, what I'm doing is all I'm doing in these spots, normally this was an x to the fourth. But once I divide it by the x part here, x to the fourth divided by x becomes x cubed. This was an x cubed, but when divided by x becomes x squared. So basically the powers are all decreased by 1. So I've got 1x cubed minus 3x squared minus 1x plus 1, and now I got this remainder. So let me clean this up first. So 1x cubed just becomes x cubed minus 3x squared minus x plus 1. Plus, I have my remainder, and that is over my divisor, which is x plus 3. So 1 over x plus 3. And that's it with the synthetic division here. So, yay, I've cleansed the daemon. Now, I have this one. Show that x minus 2 and x plus 3 are factors of f of x is equal to 2x to the 4th plus 7x cubed minus 4x squared minus 27x minus 18. Then find the remaining factors. Okay, so if these two are factors of f of x, then that means my remainder is going to be 0. It's like me saying this. Show that 6 is a factor of 24. Well, I can do that by taking 6 goes into 24, and 6 goes into 24 four times. 4 times 6 is 24, and my remainder is 0. So if these two binomials are factors of f of x, then my remainder should be 0 when I do my synthetic division. So not a problem. Let's actually take these factors and do synthetic division. So I'm going to start with x minus 2 when I do my synthetic division. First thing I'm going to do, take the opposite of negative 2, which is positive 2. And I'm going to put that positive 2 right here. Boom, positive 2. Now I'm going to give myself some room. And I'm going to write the terms of f of x. So I'm going to only write the coefficients, though. 2, 7, negative 4, negative 27, negative 18. I don't have any skips. So let's write them. 2, 7, negative 4, negative 27, and negative 18. Bring down my first term, 2. 2 times 2, well, that gives me 4, and add them, 11. 7 plus 4 is 11. Now I'm going to do 2 times 11, okay, 22. Add the terms, negative 4 plus 22. That's 18. 2 times 18. Okay. Well, that ends up being 36. And negative 27 plus 36, well, that's going to be 9. And 2 times 9 is 18. And negative 18 plus 18, negative 18 plus 18, that gives me zero. So I have a remainder of zero. Yay! 
that shows that x minus 2 is a factor. Now, for x plus 3, I can do the same thing with these coefficients here, basically these things here. Or what I can do is I can just continue on from what I have down here because these are my new terms. So this would be x cubed. This would be 11x squared, 18x plus 9. And my, my uh, new function would look like that when I pulled out x minus 2. So right now I have f of x is equal to x minus 2 times 2x cubed plus 11x squared plus 18x plus 9. Well, now I'm going to do x plus 3. I'm going to pull that out. Instead of pulling it out from this f of x here, I'm going to pull it out from this one right here. It's just going to be easier. So right now, what I'm doing is I'm putting it back the way it was here. I'm now going to, remember it's x plus 3, so I have to take opposite of positive 3, which is negative 3. And now, let's continue with some synthetic division. So I have, bring down my 2, negative 3 times 2, is negative 6, 11 minus 6, 5. Negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. 18 minus 15, 3. And I've got negative 3 times 3, negative 9. 9 minus 9, I end up with 0. And that's my remainder. So I know that negative 3, or shall I say the binomial x plus 3, is a factor as well. So what I've got now is I factored out x minus 2. I factored out x plus 3. And now my new binomial is 2x squared plus 5x plus 3. Now, the problem is asking for you to find the remaining factors. So we already got the factors of x minus 2. We already got x minus 3. Now we got to take this and find the remaining factors. Okay, well, I can do the magic x. Ooh. So I got my magic x. I take... 2 times 3, that's 6. And I take the middle term, that's 5. I need to find two numbers that multiply to give me 6, add to give me 5. Well, those two numbers are positive 2 and positive 3. Now, the leading coefficient's 2 here. So as I showed you guys, you're going to put them over... 2x, and you're going to reduce if you can, and if you can't, leave it alone. And again, show you why. So 2 and 2, that reduces into 1 over x. And 3 over 2x doesn't reduce. Now, these are, show me my new binomials. I can take this 1 over x, and my binomial is going to be x plus 1. And all I do is I take the denominator, make that my x term, take the numerator, make that my number. This one, it becomes 2x plus 3. My denominator, my numerator. So... These are my two new factors of f of x. So I got the ones that we found with the synthetic division, 
x minus 2, x plus 3, and now I have times x plus 1 times 2x plus 3. And there you have it. So you have homework today. It is synthetic division. It's five problems of synthetic division. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. I will help you tomorrow. And that's about it. So I hope you enjoyed this. And if you didn't enjoy it, I hope you learned something. And I'll talk to you later. Take care, class. Peace.